asking suited, very clear three bet call for me. Asking suited is the type of hand that almost always wants to induce since it blocks aces and kings, and the main four bet bluffs from our opponents are going to be suited aces, but we dominate. And we get folds. Ace nine could mix three bet sometimes. I rolled a fold. Look at eight, standard open, standard small sizing C bet. Not much to say about that. A6 offsuit. I think we could potentially squeeze sometimes. The six is kind of a bad one to have, so I opted to call. Three way on the flop, checks around. Now, on the king, we can't really bet from the big blind. We want to be very, very passive here. Our range is by far the weakest one. And the king is just a very connected card, which improves a lot both of our opponent's, opponent's ranges. Now, on the river, it is pretty close if we get to value bet or not. Um, exploitatively, I think we are able to go for a small sizing. In theory, I think we are supposed to just uh, pure check again and stick to betting stronger hands. I decided to check, and again, in hindsight, I think I would rather just bet. Let's see, king four. Yep, three bet, four bet. Good luck. King three, we go for an open, and it's a walk. So now that we are short-handed, there will be a bunch of hands which are walked, and I will try to skip those. Jack eight suited against the three, but even though it's pretty small, we just can't continue. Jack nine, I think I would call. Jack eight, we just let it go. Uh, but yeah, what I was saying is that there will be a bunch of just raise folds, and yeah, these ones I will try to skip. King eight, we defend. Against the small sizing, it's fairly close. With the king of spades, I think I would always continue by the raising or calling. But the eight of spades, probably not strong enough against the under the gun player. So we should just fold. Nine, seven. Yeah, just folding. Both with force. Our opponent defense, we flop pretty well. Uh, half pot sizing, yeah, this is the type of block where we want to have some bigger sizings too. And bottom set seems like a decent option for the bigger sizing. Our opponent sadly folds. Uh, yeah, of course, just folding here. Let's get to the next semi-interesting hand. I guess this is a fairly interesting one where we open and get three bet. And the question is, how wide do we actually get to defend? And pocket pairs are usually very good in defending against three bets. But with this stack distribution, I think we should be fairly tight. So I folded. King queen. King queen is the type of hand that doesn't really want to squeeze here. The reason being that we mainly fold out worse hands and we get jammed on by a bunch of suited aces, which sucks. So King Jack, King 10, and so on are decent squeezing hands. King Queen, though, mostly wants to continue by calling. So I call, flop checks around. On the turn, we could potentially start banning with the Queen of Hearts. Uh, I decided to just mix and randomize. I rolled passively. And then on this river, we just have to bluff given the amount of 4x and 9x in our range. So I went for the sizing. Uh, I think maybe even going a bit smaller is fine. But yeah, uh, I think betting is going to be pretty good. The next big hand, big hand is queen 9. We go three-way on the flop and we flop pretty good again. I mean, you have to flop good in order to win tournaments. C, but for a small sizing, I think this is just pretty standard. And the big blind calls. So, of course, we have a hand that wants to go for three, three streets here. The question is, how big do we size, though? 
the seven isn't particularly good for our range. And it's not a board that we want to be barreling too much anyway, given that it's monotone. So when we bet, I think we shouldn't go for too big a sizing and sticking to something like 75% or 70% is good. I think going for, say, a pot sizing is going to be too large here, given the texture of the board and ICM and everything. Our opponent calls and the river is a queen. Now this is kind of bad because our bluffs are going to be a lot of ace-jack type of hands or ace-queen type of hands. So the queen getting there means that we either improved to a very strong hand or we improved to a hand that doesn't need to bluff because ace-queen obviously beats a lot of 8x with a diamond or 10x with a diamond and so on. Um, of course, we still have to jam our hand for value, but it's not a very good card to get paid on. I jump and our opponent falls. Uh, pocket force. Yeah, we check to the river where I decide to value bet. It might be too thin, but I think most people will probably put in a blind with anything better than a 7. And it's likely we get looked up by some queen x, maybe 3x. Uh, it's thin, but I think it's a good value bet. a bunch of small race fold type of hands. And then we have this one. So here I opted to raise preflop. I think we should be playing, again, a strategy similar to GPV in this scenario, and raising these suited aces performs really well. Our opponent calls, and we get 10, 5, 3. This is a board where we want to have some bigger sizing seabeds and a hand like ace 4 with the box of last row just seems like a very good candidate for that. Our opponent calls, and the turn is a king. Now, here, I think we want to start mixing in some checks. We want to allow our opponent to start bluffing with a lot of very low equity hands, like 6-7, for example. And at the same time, we really don't want to get jammed on by hand like king-5, king-3, king-10, or maybe pocket-5s, five, pocket-3s, five, and so on. So I decided to check, and our opponent goes for a small sizing. Um, again, just calling. I don't think it makes a lot of sense for us to raise, especially hand as strong as this one. On the river, the five pairs, and if anyone has a five, then that is us. The flush gets there too, so I think this is a river card that we want to be having a leading range on. When our opponent sizes very small on the turn, he's more weighted towards, I would say, 10x or not so much king eggs anyway. So not, not too many strong hands that value better river themselves. So yeah, I think having a leading range makes a lot of sense. I went for a small sizing lead, and our opponent called with king three. So I think his turn sizing is pretty poor. I don't really like the small sizing selection. Uh, on the river, yeah, of course, he has to call. His hand is a bit too strong to bluff, even though it has the right properties. The reason we get to lead small on the river and not like jam or bet pot or anything like that is because when we bet small, first we get called by a bunch of hands that would fall to a bigger sizing. Then we also extract value by a bunch of hands that our opponent would check back. And we will still get raised by flashes anyway, which would be the main hand that our opponent uh, will call with when we bet big. So yeah, leading big just doesn't make too much sense here. Next up, we have ace 10 suited. Open, face a small 3-bet, very clear, continue for us. And our opponent checks the ace high flop. So ace 10 should be strong enough to start betting here. We won't really have ace queen preflop, so ace jack, ace 10 are our strongest ace x. And ace 10 with the back to flash draw seems like a decent stabbing hand. Um, then also, we all won't get check raised that much either. I think a lot of his ace highs will start betting flop. So yeah, uh, I bet small, opponent calls. On this turn, both betting and checking are decent options. If we bet and get jammed on well, we can just always call getting the odds very clearly. At the same time, by checking back, we 
often allow our opponent to improve when we improve even more. So for example, if he is sitting there on say pocket queens, pocket kings, pocket jacks, then him hitting the set and us hitting the flush is going to be a very big win. At the same time, these hands will likely fold the turn anyway, since it's so connected. So yeah, it's, I guess, sort of a free roll to check back here sometimes. Um, yeah, again, both options look good. I decided to mix in game, check back, hit the flush. Our opponent decides to bet for a small sizing, which I guess I found, I find a bit confusing. I'm not sure which hand would want to play like this. If he has pocket jacks, for example, or two pair, then these hands, I assume, should just go for a bigger sizing here. Um, but yeah, of course, we don't really have a decision besides jamming, and our opponent folded. So I guess maybe he ended up check calling the flop with a queen. I'm, I'm really, I'm not sure what his range looks like here. But yeah, uh, it's it's good to river flashes every pot. Helps with winning tournaments, I heard. Then we get a bunch of folds. Nothing really interesting. All these hands I'm not really evolved, involved in or are just raised folds. Um, then we have this king queen, where I face a seven big blind jump from a small blind. Of course, super easy call. Uh, beat jack 10. Happy times. King six, raise. See on the bigger side, get a fold. I think these low kings with backs of flash or back of straight row perform really well in the half pot sizing. The next big hand would be this one where I raise pocket eights blind versus blind. And I thought my opponent would get quite out of line here. He has been generally three betting a bunch and being on the aggressive side, perhaps more aggressive than he should be. So I thought he was very likely to not miss any low a jumps or, or low pocket pairs jumps. So a spot that is quite close, I think, would become really profitable for me here. So I end up calling, and he has pocket fives. And yeah, this is one of the hands that doesn't really want to jump preflop. As we've seen on a bunch of sims by now, pocket pairs just don't perform well as jumps because they don't have blockers, and they only block folding range. And then we get heads up. Um, it was a pretty, I guess, uh, quick match, given how big of a chip advantage I had. Uh, he won a pot, I won a pot, and then the final hand would be the one with a6. So this one, where our opponent has 18 big blinds. He goes to 0.5, I jump, he calls a 10 and in proper fashion, we reverse 6. So, of course, I ran extremely well in order to get to this stage and to win the tournament. I hit a bunch of boards and even like this final hand. Uh, but yeah, of course, these things have to happen in order to win tournaments. I think there were a bunch of interesting spots and we saw some very interesting sim outputs. This was differently paced than the previous ones, a lot more sim heavy. But again, I said that this was going to be the format since the first video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it informative. All feedback is welcome, like always. And see you on the next one. Thank you for watching.